Yeah, welcome back to uh, Think Tech here at the 11 o'clock block on a given Thursday. And um, let, welcome back more specifically to Coronaville and that what's next and it's it, it revealing itself in, in the future, but also in the past. Um, and we were talking before the show and, and, our, and our guests as usual are Tim Apicella, uh, Stephanie Dalton, uh, Cynthia Sinclair, Winston Welch. Um, before the show, we were talking about, you know, what happens uh, if, we, if we have a designated viewer among us who goes and watches, uh, goes and watches uh, Fox News every week and comes back and reports to us. And, and um, you know, Cynthia pointed out that after 10 minutes, you can't do it anymore because that you get the lies within the 10 minutes and the absurd statements. But I was pointing out that after 10 minutes, what happens is your brain turns into gelatinous, gelatinous mass and it's, it's not healthy especially these days. So we may or may not do that. But Tim, let's talk to you first. I mean, this has been remarkable, not in the sense of going forward, but in the sense of going backward, um, because it's coming out. All these people are coming out with revelations about what happened with Trump in the White House. Um, and you know, it's, it, it goes back to uh, March and April. You and I did a show, we used the word hoax in the title of the show. We have hundreds and hundreds, thousands of hits already on, on that show. Um, and what was happening at the time was that he was, he, was on, he was at the podium and he was saying, we have to reopen, reopen, reopen. All you people, if you love me, reopen. Okay, but he wasn't doing anything. And now we have different, different views of what was going on in the White House and it's all coming out. So I guess the first question I put to you, Tim, is uh, what's coming out these days? Because it is shocking. Well, thank you, Jay. Um, I'm going to give you my best answer because my mind, as of this morning, because I did watch Fox, is a gelatinous mess. <laughs> so the answer I give will be the best I can give. Uh, number one is, you know, we have this senior advisor from HHS, Paul Alexander, and this, this scathing email that uh, it's okay to infect infants and children and young adults and middle-aged adults, and it's the goal to have them become infected so that we could have this herd immunity concept. Um, that, that reflects a whole lot on the attitude of Donald Trump and the administration and the task force on how they didn't deal with the virus. And that is, let's do nothing, but let's pretend and make it look like we're doing something. And uh, here we are, 307,000 deaths due to COVID. And again, by the administration's inaction, we have 307,000 deaths. And I think this email is very telling, and I think we're going to see a lot more uh, emails in the, in the coming months, um, really illuminating Donald Trump's thinking, uh, uh, Scott Atlas's thinking, and, and senior advisors that were pointing in this direction of do nothing, because we don't want to damage the Dow. We don't want to damage the NASDAQ and the standards and poor. We want the economy to be vibrant so that when Donald Trump comes up to election time, he'll succeed. And he almost did. Yeah, well, a lot of people still believe it's a hoax. A lot, you know, it's it's a question of messaging, messaging uberalis, as they say. The other thing they say is Marie Antoinette was famous for saying, "Let them eat cake, let them get virus. It's okay, it's them, not us." Uh, so, so Cynthia, you know, I think one of the issues here is uh, um, there doesn't seem to be any active policy or plan from the beginning of COVID till now. Uh, not everybody in the country believes that. Some, some people have this vague notion that, in fact, he's been effective. But um, do you see anything that he has done? I mean, his task force fell apart. Uh, and then he was speaking alone from the podium day after day, reporting on really nothing, um, taking no steps, and, and only doing what was, Tim was talking about, trying to, trying to appeal to the country, to the base, about how well his government was doing in other regards, like in, like in the uh, stock market. But has, has he done anything? I mean, what, how do you characterize the work of this administration from the beginning till now in this department? Selfish and lazy would be the first two words that come to mind. Um, the lazy approach is don't do anything and call it herd immunity. How convenient, right? You don't actually have to do anything then. And, that's no good either. So that's the lazy part. And then the selfish part is like you said, only doing things that, that helped his base or his 
brand, so to speak. It seems like everything he has done is to help the Trump brand. Um, and anything that takes away from that is no good. And he doesn't put any, any effort into at all. Well, what's and interesting is that now in the transition, now when he's a short timer, and we have uh, 300,000 plus people died already, and you know, thousands a day die. Um, he doesn't comment on it. What does this reveal? And he's, instead, he's busy chasing Hunter Biden around. Um, what does this reveal about him? And is it is it consistent? Uh, is it reveal something we didn't know before? I don't think so. I think that people with their eyes open knew before he even got elected which is why so many of us were absolutely terrified when he won. And we were terrified about this very thing happening that has happened, the corruption, the, the lack of caring about anyone but himself, which is what happens when you deal with an extreme narcissist like we're dealing with. Do you give him credit for the, the vaccines? Do you give him credit for the logistics around the vaccines? None, none at all, zero. Um, I. I really, and I'm, I'm almost at a loss for words. When I heard somebody saying we You're should- You're never at a loss for words, actually. Well, since that's then. kind of true, but <laughs> so see, that's how radical it is. If it, if it makes me at a loss for words, then you know, it must be big. Um, you know, when someone wanted to call this the Trump vaccine, I almost fell off my chair. I was, I was just like, usually I'm up, yelling and screaming at the television when these outrageous things happen. This time, I literally had no words. I just could hardly speak. I, how outrageous is that? To give any kind of credit at all to this man is just unconscionable. So, so you know, we've covered it. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, the liberal media has covered it, the Times and MSNBC and CNN, Stephanie. Um, and and, and it, it's really a terrible story. Um, and uh, there's no other way to characterize it. And yet, uh, and it's the biggest story, clearly the biggest story in the country, the biggest story, top headline every single day, uh, how many people are dying. I mean, it's awful. Is it affecting, is it affecting the base? And if it is not affecting the base, what process is going on among the base that they could ignore it? Well, I have thought that my, um, my, big uh, response um, of depression and uh, more disappointment um, and disbelief was when I found out that actually Trump did have the COVID, but he had one of the treatments of which there are like two and a half now having been given to him and Giuliani and to uh, the New Jersey governor. And that uh, those are those that I don't, the, the, the name of the drug cocktail begins with an R. And she, Regeneron. Okay, very few of those are available and they're $100,000, okay? So that was where I got, I was in a slump all day walking around thinking of all of the hundreds of thousands of people that did not have access to that, would not have access to that and can't go, for, go forward with it, who's got the 100K? for that, but, and, and is there enough? And there's not enough. So that made me realize this is even more deeply evil and he's more deeply um, disturbed and uh, a fractured uh, human. Well, it's, but it's heating up, it's heating up. Like Tim was saying, more is coming out now, you know, about exactly how, how, how insensitive and evil yeah. he has been, you know, through, through the whole pandemic. Until no, now, increasingly till now. And, and the question is, this, this is coming out, it's occupying more geography in the newspapers and on television. Is this affecting his base at all, this revelation? Well, I'm thinking maybe not because he's modeling the narcissistic uh, syndrome and that means no empathy whatsoever for anybody else's situation. So um, somehow, you know, the, the base is like that. I, I don't know that it's got that, psychopathy, but the base um, is not concerned either because it was okay with them if all the old people die. Yeah, because the base, is, the base itself is dying though. Yeah. You'd think that somebody- well, now, you know, finally, think... Yeah, let's find out if um, that is ever gonna have an impact on them, but it's always, it's gonna happen to the other guy. 
So um, the base is an important part of America. It's a lot of young people and they're immortal. People have immortal attitudes. And I think that's the immaturity of Trump also, is he still thinks he's immortal. That's yeah. what's going on along with the narcissism in the life. Yeah, really, it's it's interesting. It's he thinks he's immortal, but we know that he's not immortal. And yeah. if he thinks he's gonna live on through 2024, the, the way he lives, um, that's not such a surefire thing. So Winston, you know, the fact is that with all this talk about the vaccine, a lot of talk about the vaccine, you know, every day they come on, they show you because the people are getting vaccines, big guys, little guys, everybody getting vaccines and, uh, and, and all the, um, you know, the implications of that, including, by the way, this, this fellow yesterday uh, who had some kind of allergic reaction. I don't know if you caught that. Uh, and that was bad. But, you know, when you take it in, in light of, um, you know, millions of Americans uh, who could be, will be ultimately saved, uh, it doesn't really bother me much. But let me, let me ask you this, though. Um, Trump is not now. Now he's doing nothing. Okay. He hasn't been doing anything. The numbers are astronomical daily in total. Um, Biden is not the president. I think we have to be clear about that. He can talk about it, but he really can't do anything about it. He doesn't control anything. It's not clear that he will control a whole lot in the Senate. That, that has to be decided. Um, so, you know, how do you feel about the vaccine as opposed to the fact that the numbers every day, every day in every way are still spiking enough to shake your eyeballs? Um, you know, when are we going to be out of the woods? Because the vaccine is not going to have an immediate effect, even at best. And right now it's having, you know, in the pandemic, very little effect, no effect. Well, you know, it's a go back again, basically to personal responsibility. Don't go out if you don't have to. When you go out, you wear a mask, you wash your hands, you don't touch your head. Um, actually, I was excited when Cynthia was talking about a Trump vaccine. I thought, could we be inoculated against this family where we just get this shot and then we're not affected by them anymore? Like, this no, is a great not, idea. It's not now, you, Winston. We have to give that shot to the base. Frontiers of gets science. That shot. No, you know, it's, it is it, in many ways, uh, as you know, we talked about on a previous show, that this, uh, this frenzy, politics of grievance, all of that, it is an infectious disease. And it, it explains a lot towards modeling. Um, just as, the, as a um, battered wife syndrome uh, also it has some parallels here to what America's going through right now and trying to get out of this relationship. Um, while there's a, a apologists on the other side, you know, like, oh, look, my little Johnny would never hit you type of thing. It's the parents or, or the people explaining it away. I think there's some really good parallels there. So if that Trump vaccine comes out, that's a great idea. But in the meantime, let's just go with the COVID vaccine. We got about 50,000 doses here this month in Hawaii. Uh, it's good for 25,000 people. We're getting 100,000 next month. Good for 50,000 people from my yeah, understanding. Yeah, but it's a vaccine. If you get sick, if you test positive, it doesn't have a whole lot of effect. To, no, to but we are, we're starting at the, with the most vulnerable. Those are who are in institutions, hopefully. Uh, they'll, I mean, we had a huge outbreak in the prison. Those people are, un, those are wards of the state. Um, and so people that are there and the people that take care of them, whether it's an old folks home or a children's home or whatever, that, that's a priority as, as our first responders. And there's a whole bunch of people who need to get this right away. We're not, you asked about when is this going to be done. Uh, Dr. Fauci says, don't plan on, don't plan on 4th of July gatherings. He said, maybe by, next Christmas we'll have normal holidays, but I think he's just trying to steal us a little bit. Uh, but the, the numbers that are scary are the ones that say, 40%, even here in Hawaii, it was something like 45% of the people aren't sure that they get the vaccine. So there's a huge amount of education that needs to be done. You talked about Joe Biden not being the president. He is the president. He's the president elect. He is providing a role model in what he says, what he does, simply appearing in public with his mask, as opposed to the State Department yesterday. Yesterday, Mike Pompeo was in quarantine. He was going to have a party for 900 people. Most of them wisely didn't show up. Um, we're in a hopeful moment right now. In the meantime, you know, like the Atlantic says, is it safe to hold a holiday party? No, stay home. Enjoy Christmas so that you can enjoy a lot more Christmases in the future, birthdays, anniversaries. I like the idea, maybe by July 4th, it'll be Liberation Day and we can celebrate all the Christmases, bar mitzvahs, uh, anniversaries, 
birthdays, everything on that day that we've been holding up for, for so long. But right now, we're still right in the thick of it. It's getting a lot worse. The news out of California is horrendous. Uh, yeah. Field hospitals everywhere. I, I, uh, we're not out of it at all yet, but there are signs for definite hope. Well, you know, Tim, I, you know, we, we got people out there who are opposing, uh, you know, it goes back to the hoax thing. My favorite story of the week is the, the mayor of um, Dodge City, Kansas. We talked a little about that yesterday on your show. Um, she quit. She was on the tube last night explaining why. Um, it's really gruesome. You, know, you get, get threats to do what essentially other counties and the state is doing in that state of Kansas. Um, and yet, uh, you know, she was being threatened for it. Um, we have people out there who would threaten her, lots of them, and some who would even carry those threats out. How are we going to clean that up? Are we not going to clean it up during, during Trump? That's for sure. He's never going to relent. He's never going to say, don't do that. He's never going to say that. But Biden, Biden is, you know, on the cusp here. What can Biden do to change the tone of the country to make what Winston wants to happen, happen? I think it's going to be done. Yes, the leadership will take place on a national level. But, you know, like politics, everything is local. And so it's going to have to be the law enforcement agencies of each state and each city and each, you know, township that's going to have to enforce, you know, to make sure violence doesn't happen openly in the streets of America. And I, I'm hoping that it won't come to that. You know, we saw this incident in Washington, D.C., where there was uh, shootings and several stabbings. I'm hoping that's an isolated isolated incident. And I'm hoping that the passion and the, and the, and the temperature uh, from this lost election for Donald Trump starts to come down. That over time they realize, okay, he is not going to be our second term president. And they move on to other grievances. Um, you mentioned the anti-vaxxers. I think those who are, um, you know, deny that Trump lost the election, these are perfect candidates for those who are going to deny the vaccine and not participate. And, you know, if you think about it, if you never agreed that COVID was a real disease in the first place, why on earth would you take the vaccine? So I think by Donald Trump's and the administration's uh, broadcast on how this was just nothing but a democratic hoax or a bad flu, that stuck and that hasn't left their mentality and their attitudes. And therefore, when it comes to the time to take the vaccine, they're going to they're going to say no. We're not going to do it. It's it's the deep state that wants me to take this vaccine, and I'm not going to do it. Well, this is also a trust question, and, and it's an interesting point raised yesterday in one of my TV shows. It was not Fox News, um, where you know Trump has said you know warp speed. Of course, he does nothing, but he uses the term as part of his messaging, warp speed. And some people, maybe on the margins of the base take that to mean, wait a minute, that's too fast, that they you can't trust a vaccine that is, that is being built at warp speed. And therefore, they're, they're concerned about it. I mean, I, I don't want to say legitimately concerned, that, that's in play right now. Um, but they're concerned that it happened too fast, and therefore, they don't have confidence in it. So it's not only, you know, that he hasn't done anything, not only that he's turned the whole thing around to be political, but that he's suggesting to people that it may not be uh, effective because it happened so fast. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, we're starting to hear you doctors and research doctors saying that the basis for this vaccine really has been in the works for years uh, through research and development. It just never has come to the front of the table. Um, we're now hearing those stories and I think is to address your very point that uh, it was developed rather quickly. and. Um, I think that's part of the strategy, the messaging strategy that uh, we, we've known about how to uh, you know, attack that one protein that has the spikes on it and introduce this um, non-benign, if you will, uh, uh, a solution to, to uh, arresting COVID. And I think that's what they're going to push harder and harder and more often about why the vaccine is actually safer than what one might think. Yeah, and that's what Biden should do. He should, he should continue a, a campaign of informing the public and all that to rebuild 
trust trust in the vaccine. Well, and it's it's not it's not make believe. It's you know this this is an actual facts that this has been researched for years. So it's just bringing the truth to the table versus uh, our administration, the current administration of making things up out of thin air. So let's let's talk about Stephanie. Let's talk about the CDC. You know, uh, let's talk about public information. Let's talk about candor, transparency, accuracy, and all that. I mean, I remember when Kellyanne Conway was campaigning for him. This is before he was elected. Um, she had this fantastic ability to lie about everything. And so, what you know, what kind of a candidate you know would you would you vote for a person who has a spokesman that lies on everything, straight face lies? <clears throat> and he did a lot of lying, but then he tries to make other people lie. And I think one of the things that came out here this week is uh, his manipulation of the CDC um, and, uh, and how, uh, and how uh, Trump was um, changing their reports, uh, it was hiding information, uh, and was, they call it a, a slow, relentless suffocation, or the words to that effect. Of, uh, what were you say, Cynthia? You had something on this? <laughs> Your suffocation, okay. But <clears throat> this, the one, what I want to get to is, um, is the thing in Florida with DeSantis there, DeSantos, the governor. And there was a woman by the name of Rebecca, uh, wait, I'll tell you. Yeah, Rebecca Jones, who was in charge of um, keeping uh, COVID records, health records in the State Department of Health. And she revealed that things weren't going so well in Florida. <clears throat> so, uh, so the Republican establishment, namely DeSantos, went after her and she quit. And, um, and then ultimately, a couple of days ago, uh, they, they essentially broke into her house with guns drawn and uh, terrified her family, including her kids with guns drawn. And they took all her stuff out there. I don't know if there's a search warrant, but it was a phony search warrant if there was. So what are your thoughts about this? This is the governor of the state and the state police of the state. And, and here we are, uh, you know, in December, uh, just 35, 34 days before the end of Trump's uh, administration. And this is happening. Well, it, it sounds like DeSantos is as vile and snaky, and, you know, as that Alexander report reveals the presidential policy was, because he was changing, and that's what she has revealed. She wouldn't go along with it. She didn't put the data up as directed. And so then um, it's revealing that all of the data in Florida was not correct. So they weren't releasing the real numbers. So um, this is what we're, we're hearing about now. As you said, Jay, earlier, we're just gonna have this or to, this rollout of the horror stories of what's going on behind the scenes and how truly um, evil and dark um, all of this is in the service of Trump's um, presidential bid. So, I, I mean, it is just really sickening. I mean, that's the exp experience I'm having of it now. And I, uh, I, I think we're just gonna have to uh, endure it, but I think it will eventually re rebound to him and, and, and take, down, take him down with it. I, I just, I don't, I don't see that it can go any other way eventually. I mean, it'll take time to, and the other thing is that with the CDC and the NIH, all, I'm coming from the grant world, the discretionary grant world. Um, all of those, all of that work is federally funded, or at least partially, because that's where the big bucks are for research. Who's funding research? You can get a Gates Foundation or Spencer or something good, but you've got to go to the feds to get the bucks to do the kind of stuff that people were able to do as soon as the virus came into anybody's head. So, I mean, they'd already been working on that, or those concepts, those constructs, those theories and how to get to an RNA kind of... Uh, you know, uh, code to change, you know, the, uh, the chromosomes and the gene information. So they'd already been working on that for sure. I mean, they didn't start from scratch. They already had some work going. But my question is in response to your question about the CDC is how the feds, how the pre president came in and could get in the way of people with all this fed, these grant regulations. I mean, you can't change your stuff on a grant, but then that says to me, back it up because whoever was uh, giving them the grant then they had to back down from ha from meeting the standards also. So that's how deeply I think, you know, Trump got into these agencies so that 
you know, the, the, the person doing the work out front looks like they're not doing it right, but they're directed by the people who are regulating them and they're told by the president to knock it down or do it differently. So it just, that's why I say our institutions are weakened. They're yeah. weak and hollowed out. So Cynthia, you know, another example of this is this woman, I think her name is Troy, and she was on the, uh, the task force under Pence. She's a senior White House official. She was uh, an official on the task force. And she's been making, you know, press appearances uh, over the past few weeks uh, talking about, the, you know, the bizarre things that happened on the task force. I think, and, and Pence himself, he did nothing. Um, and the task force had all these weird Atlas-like people in it. Um, and, and I think this is going to happen more and more. It's going to quicken in the next few weeks, maybe with due regard for the election in, uh, in Georgia. But also as Trump loses power or apparently uh, has to give up power at the time of the inauguration, um, don't you think there'll be more coming out of the woodwork? Don't you think that we're going to find out just exactly what was happening because people will not be intimidated by a president who no, no longer has the power to intimidate the bureaucracy? What do you think? I absolutely think that's going to happen. I think it's not going to just dribble out. I think it's going to come in a big flood. And once one person starts, another person will be empowered and emboldened to do the same. And so I think over these next few months, we're just going to see more and more and more. And we're going to find out more and more about actual data that's been changed and manipulated to look like something different. And it's like, it seems like now we're starting to get a little bit more of the correct information. We had 3,298 people die yesterday. That's like a person every minute or so, isn't it? I mean, it's just insanity. Now, as soon as the numbers started going up in Florida, that's when all the, the manipulation of their numbers started. And even with, this is the thing that gets me, even with all of the, you know, uh, the manipulation that they did, they still, Florida is one of the highest um, states for the most, you know, highest numbers of infection and deaths also. They're way up there at the top. So you can imagine how bad it really is. If it's this bad with the manipulated numbers, what does that mean it really is? Yes. Well, yes. And he's, he's had so many places on the information pipeline, uh, you know, to do that where he's actually done. I, I'm only hoping that this will come out more and more now before the election in Georgia. And, yeah. and hopefully the people in Georgia will see. Although the news in Georgia is pretty good. Uh, right. The last thing I saw was that it's probable that the Democrats had more votes. What were you saying? They just came out with some new stuff against the um, Purdue guy, and they're starting to come out with more. And hopefully, they're doing. They're just flooding the airwaves down in in Georgia about what Kelly Loeffler did in in regards to the insider trading. Both of them, Purdue did the same thing. So, and then they also have just released some stuff about Kelly Loeffler and how she downgraded her home. From it's like she bought it for ten million, and then all of a sudden it's still you know the same, the same, the same. Then all of a sudden it drops six thousand, I mean six million dollars, so that her taxes were about two hundred thousand dollars less, you know. And then it dropped again and again and again. And there's absolutely no reason for it to have dropped. There was no you know. No. She she and her husband are ostensibly worth eight hundred million dollars. It's not, it's not like they're common folk. Uh, let, me, let me shift to you, Winston. You know, one of the things that, is, that has happened here that is totally remarkable um, is the fact that we have not had a COVID relief bill, um, gee, since what, April? Um, and in May, the uh, Democrats came up with a, what, two point something trillion dollar bill to follow the first bill. And that has languished all this time. Let me count the months, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. And it has languished all this time without a, a farthing to help the 
you know, the people on the street. Um, there are those who say that this has caused live, caused us lives. Mm -hmm. And that some, at least some of the people who have died, the enormous number of people who have died, have died for the lack of help from the federal government. What are your thoughts about that? And what are your thoughts about what's really happening in these negotiations? Why do we have this painful, cruel uh, delay? Well, Mitch McConnell's still in charge of the Senate. And uh, that's number one uh, in, in my books. Donald Trump, I thought he, he was fine to pass this bill. It's in, gonna be interesting because he said he's gonna veto the defense spending bill, forcing the Republicans to override his veto, which they probably will. Um, I wonder if they'll wait until after the 6th of January to do so, but uh, they need the money right now, as far as I know. But that was, you know, had some Confederate um, renaming of, of things. Look, it's, it's a very confusing um, horse trading that goes on in there. And Nancy Pelosi, uh, it, I think she's trying the hardest she can and she's got, but this thing is a disaster. There's no two ways about it. Does it matter to America if we borrowed 20, mil, 20 trillion or 21 trillion or 22 trillion? Does 10% more matter in the long run, especially with the Republicans who have absolutely um, run up enormous deficits under Donald Trump's, they cannot claim a shred of um, fiscal uh, prudence when you're talking about this. So it's other things. It, it was, uh, I think, I'm not sure why it hasn't happened. It's not right. There's no relief for the cities or the states in this bill. You're forcing really untenable choices um, and all across the land. Hopefully when Biden comes in, they will open the taps up again, especially if they get the 50 seats that we need. He's already appointed, you know, Pete Buttigieg for uh, uh, transportation uh, secretary and a Native uh, American lady in charge of Department of Interior. He's making all the right moves of putting people that are going to change the tone and tenor of our federal government, which has been AWOL or just uh, totally negligent in their duties. Uh, it's all changing. And so we have to just hold on for a few more weeks until this, till the, the storm passes. And then... We'll see what happens, but right now, nothing's, uh, it's all up for grabs, as far as I can tell, for the next three or four weeks. So don't hold your breath about anything because- Well, we, 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 we will hold our breath in the sense that we don't, we don't have a show until the first week in January. So the predictions we make here, you know, would be pretty good. And well, that's for, why- For the youngins, I wanted to let them know a farthing was an ancient unit of currency. Um, so when, when uh, you say no not even a farthing was given that's what we're talking about not one red cent all of these months and it is a disgrace whether it's a cent a dollar a deutsche mark or whatever. it is amazing but tim you know uh i wanted to ask you something and i wanted to ask you for a prediction in closing here uh so mitch mcconnell he has really been an evil person and he is largely if not exclusively responsible for for the failure of the impeachment, the failure of the Mueller investigation, um, and the failure of COVID relief over the, the past how many months. Um, but now he seems to be turning away from Trump. Why is he doing that? And is he working under, under, underfoot uh, in Georgia somehow uh, to pull it out the way he pulled it out for himself in Kentucky to somehow stay in power? and in Georgia somehow continue to control the majority of the Senate. Where is he? Is he breaking away um, or is he working to continue his power? Um, is he really going to negotiate and collaborate with Biden or is it all an evil ruse? He, the answer was embedded in your question. And that is, he realizes that the Democrat, excuse me, the Republican party is split and those that are Trumpians um, are actually speaking against voting in, uh, in, in Georgia. And he realizes he needs every GOP vote he can muster. So he has to split from the Trump, uh, the Trump way of thinking. And if he doesn't, uh, the Senate will go to the Democrats and Mitch McConnell will be out. And he knows that. He's, he's a smart guy, actually. Uh, he has you know, caused so much gridlock, not only in this administration, but he's caused gridlock in the Obama administration ever since the uh, vote in Massachusetts went to, after uh, Senator Kennedy died. He's really the, the one running this country and 
and determining the agenda of this country. And he'd like to continue to do that. So the answer is, yes, he has broken from Trump. He realized that Trump will have some popular power. But as you've said in previous shows, the bully pulpit is his main basis of power. And he won't have that any longer. So um, I think Mitch McConnell's taking full advantage of that. Yeah. Um, you, you think Mitch McConnell is going to change and be um, a negotiating partner with Biden and the Biden administration? I think he'll come around and there'll be a lot more um, policy decisions that will be um, bipartisan. I think the infrastructure bill will be a huge bipartisan effort. Uh, there'll be immigration reform, but not to the ex extreme position that the Trump administration have put forward. Uh, we're going to see all sorts of different avenues where bipartisanship will, will be actually uh, put in play. Hope so. Hope so. Well, thank you, Tim. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Winston. Great discussion. Um, you guys have a, a nice Christmas and uh, hopefully a happier new year. And we'll see you in the first week of January. In the meantime, uh, keep reading, watching, and be ready for uh, catch up uh, and update uh, when we meet again. Thanks so much. Aloha.